Chapter 58 Competition at Star Argus Palace Hey hey, have you heard? The decennial competitions of the Star Argus Palace will begin in three days' times. It seems that both the South Sect and North Sect think that their victory is a foregone conclusion. PSHT. How could that bunch of broads from the North Sect win out over the beast of the South Sect? They haven't won against the South Sect for the last 60 years. What goes around comes around. It's said the Sect Mistress Jade of the North Sect has obtained a few disciples whose potentials are quite good. They're all beautiful to a fault. And there's high hope for the Sect triumphing over the South Sect this time. Whatever. Whether it's the South Sect or the North Sect that wins, it won't be our turn to live in the Star Argus Palace. It's just be a bunch of men changing to a crowd of women. Zhang Chen heard this snippet of conversation from a neighboring table in some tavern. In the days after he'd arrived in the large rock country, he'd heard the most information about the North and South Sects of the Star Argus Palace. The winner would be able to take up residence in the Star Argus Palace, and the loser would have to depart and find another location to settle down in. Of course, this occurred once every ten years. If a sect lost, then they merely needed to stage a comeback next time. Zhang Chen drank alone, but his hearing was focused on all sides. His ear of his effort was now at the third level and his hearing was at least two to three times stronger than the average practitioner. All sorts of information and messages flowed in at the moment. Star Argus Palace, North Sect, Broads, Beauties. The useful information was constantly filtered out and listed separately by Zhang Chen. Resting his wine cup, Zhang Chen put down a few silvers and floated out the door. He decided to make a stop at the Star Argus Palace. If the Lotus Harvester was to commit an incident lately, then there was no location more suitable in the entire Tanu territory than the Star Argus Palace. Beautiful disciples, just this item was of enough interest. The law of rapists was that the higher the level of the training of the victim, the better. Therefore, girls who trained were the favorites of rapists. And where else in the large rock province would have more beauties than the Star Argus Palace at this moment? Not to mention the fact that they were all practitioners, it would be one big harvest if these girls were plucked. Zhang Chen contemplated things from the perspective of the Lotus Harvester and felt that even if the Lotus Harvester didn't commit an incident, he was sure to come out and pluck something or another. Zhang Chen used a few materials to make a few adjustments and disguise himself after leaving the capital. His current visage appeared as a 30-something wandering gallant. Vagabond gallants and characters like these numbered at least 800 million, if not 1 billion within the Eastern Kingdom. Zhang Chen's disguise was beyond ordinary. It was the type that wouldn't be picked out if thrown into a crowd. The Star Argus Palace's topography was exceedingly ideal. A city called Star City had formed in the 50 kilometers around the Star Argus Palace, and it had been built reliant on the Star Argus Palace. The existence of a sect, even an ordinary sect, would bring pervasive influence to its local surroundings. Two days later, Zhang Chen arrived at the Star City to discover that not just anyone could spectate the competition between the North and South sects of the Star Argus Palace, there were only 300 audience members allowed. After eliminating the predetermined quota, there were only roughly 100 places left for outsiders. The number of wandering glants that had surged into the Star City the past couple of days numbered more than a 100,000. More than a 100,000 competing for roughly 100 spots was the equivalent of one out of a thousand. This wasn't just an ordinary level of difficulty. However, Zhang Chen knew that in order to investigate the Lotus Harvester, he would have to obtain an observation spot. If Zhang Chen revealed his status as the heir to a dukedom, he was bound to cause a ruckus within Star City. It wouldn't be a hard thing to obtain an observation spot. However, if he did so, that would be in violation of the rules, and he would be directly thrown out of the competition. Zhang Chen arrived at the Star Argus Palace headquarters stationed in Star City. There was already a sea of humanity and it was packed full of people. I'll pay 30,000 silver, who's willing to give me a spot, PSHT. Pal, did you just awaken from your dream? A hundred thousand silver won't even buy a spot now, how could you offer a price in the tens of thousands? A. Hey, I'm a five meridians true chi, don't I have the right to spectate the battles? Apologies, our rules are that unless you have the right to enter only if you're six meridians true chi. Brother, I have a relationship with Z Kiang of the South Sect. Make an exception for me, who's Z Kiang? We only recognize relationships with the sect master and the elders. Brother, I'm the boss of Thousand Horse Hall. Your star Argus Palace has also done business with me. This observation spot. Sorry, business is business and relationships are relationships. If you have money, there are still a few spots for sale. A hundred thousand silver for one. Gah, I'll buy one. Zhang Chen did an auditory sweep and comments such as these traveled into his ears. The entire scene was in a chaotic uproar. Everyone was trying their utmost and breaking their heads trying to get an observation spot. I. When a man is poor his ambition is not far-reaching. Looks like we're destined to be without luck for observing this decennial competition between the North and South sects. What can we do? The Star Argus Palace is just that cocky. Apparently the disciples that are participating this time are all disciples of five meridians true chi. TSK TSK. The strength and influence of a foremost sect in the Tanu territory all right. These genius disciples probably wouldn't be inferior even when placed amongst the sons and disciples of the various nobles. This. They'll probably be on a similar level. Zhang Chen was speechless when he heard those words. Five Meridians True Chi was absolutely the lowest level of existence amongst the heirs. However, this Star Argus Palace was just a sect in the Tanu territory. It was a thing worth having pride and dignity in that they boasted so many disciples of Five Meridians True Chi. Zhang Chen stood in a corner, debating how to get his hands on an observation invitation. He purposefully disguised himself as a Three Meridians True Chi independent practitioner with humble strength. 
he had no desire to reveal his downs and attract the lotus harvester's attention. Therefore, he absolutely could not reveal his true strength. After thinking for a while, Zhang Chen hit upon an idea. Brother, my strength in martial Tao is mediocre, but my potential in spirit medicine is quite high. I am also exceedingly adept in the Tao of alchemy. I can help out if any injuries from the blade result in the process. High potential in spirit medicine. That will only be proven through tests. If you truly have such abilities, then it will be no problem obtaining an invitation. Zhang Chen sat through a spirit medicine test according to the other's instructions. This was practically as simple as eating to Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen was treated as an honor guest in less than 15 minutes. His spirit medicine caused even the spirit medicine administrator from the Star Argus Palace, who had assumed personal command over the area, to even slightly admit defeat. In this way, an invitation was in hand and spirit medicine Great Master Chen was written on it. Zhang Chen had given himself a shake and become Great Master Chen. Zhang Chen's status immediately increased greatly with the invitation, becoming the distinguished, honored guest. A specially assigned person led him into the headquarters of the Star Argus Palace and arranged a first-class guest room for him. Hey hey, it looks like one must have expertise in one specialty. One wouldn't even be able to enter the door without a particular specialty. Zhang Chen laughed self-deprecatingly and sat cross-legged on the bed. It would obviously not be the thing to do if he started practicing techniques in a powerful and dynamic way whilst on someone else's territory. Zhang Chen meditated for a while and started circulating vast waves through Qi in his body, strengthening his meridians. After strengthening his meridians, Zhang Chen started training the three abilities of God's Eye, Ear of the Zephyr, and Boulder's Heart. As of now, Zhang Chen had trained God's Eye to the peak of the third level, and Ear of the Zephyr to the peak of the third level as well. Progress was still slow in Boulder's Heart, as he had just entered the second level. It's said that these abilities can penetrate the 33 heavens, too, therefore there should be 33 levels. I have only but just started from ground zero. Zhang Chen also knew that the earliest stages of training were the easiest. It would unfortunately become more difficult as one progressed. The range in which the God's Eye and Ear of his effort could cover was only a radius of a thousand meters. Any further would be beyond his power. The mental strength of Psychic's head wasn't able to be defined in quantitative terms, but Zhang Chen could clearly sense that his mental state of being had increased greatly. A mental state of being could only be perceived in the finest of details. It was an instinctive strength, a sixth, seventh sense that exceeded the five senses. Zhang Chen woke up early the next morning because the descendial event of the Star Argus Palace was beginning today. As Great Master Chen in the spirit medicine world, he had actually been arranged a second class seat. This seat was quite ideal and was situated behind only the high and mighty in the first row. Zhang Chen used the God's Eye for slight observation and discovered those sitting in front all possessed power that didn't lose out to the North and South Sect Master, mistress of the Star Argus Palace. They were mostly all at seven meridians true chi. Looks like the culture of martial Tao is flourishing in the large rock province. It's a rare sight to have so many seven meridians true chi practitioners present. Zhang Chen evaluated silently, but was also slightly worried. With so many seven meridians true chi practitioners holding down the fort, even with the Lotus Harvester's eight meridians true chi, he probably wouldn't dare to brazenly do something impetuous. Zhang Chen's emotions were quite complicated. He both hoped for the Lotus Harvester to appear, but also didn't wish for female practitioners to be targeted. Just as he was wavering, a group of people walked out from the hallways on the two sides. One side wore all black, they were from the South Sect. One side was all female and mostly wore downy yellow clothes, patently the North Sect. The South Sect Sect Master was called Shen Rong and roughly 40 years old. Long sideburns along with his thin, lean features, gave off a dignified bearing. Everyone called the Sect Mistress of the North Sect as Madame Jade. She was a young, married woman who actually looked only roughly 27 or 28. A pair of tapered dominant eyes adorned her face and she was exceedingly alluring. No one knew if that was her true age or if she was skilled in making herself look youthful. As a guest, Zhang Chen couldn't very well have no respect and observe the two heads of their sex through the god's eye. But from external appearances, the two were absolutely of the advanced realm of true qi. As for whether it was seven meridians true qi or eight meridians, Zhang Chen couldn't gauge it either, without a careful look. Hey hey, junior sister Jade, it's been ten years but your elegance remains the same as before. Shen Rong chuckled and took the lead in speaking. Save the idle chatter Shen Rong. In this time's competition, my north sect will absolutely take back control of the Star Argus Palace. Madam Jade's delicate brow arched and her jade-like voice sounded. All right, then let our disciples fight decisively. Shen Rong smiled freely and easily, 